Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a really cool polynomial equation. We have x to the power 6 equals x minus 1 to the power 6 and we're going to be solving for x values. We've done some similar problems before. I'll share the links down below. I'll be presenting three methods and let's start with the first one. So for the first method, I'm going to use, first of all, let's go ahead and put both of these on the same side. And then I would like to use difference of two squares. So I'm going to write the first expression as x cubed squared and the second one as x minus 1 cubed squared. And the difference is equal to 0. Okay. Now, using difference of two squares, remember the formula a squared minus b squared can be written as a plus b multiplied by a minus b. So that's the formula we're going to use, x cubed plus x minus 1 cubed. That's going to be one of the factors. And the other factor is just going to be difference of these two terms, x cubed and x minus 1 quantity cubed. So this gives us two factors. And notice that the first factor is a sum of two cubes. So we're going to use another formula, which is sum of two cubes. That is a cubed minus b cubed. And that is equal to a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. And the second one is a difference of two cubes. And that formula is very similar to this one. And here is what the formulas are. Great. So let's go ahead and apply those. The first one will be factored as x plus x minus 1. And then we're going to multiply that by a squared, which is x squared in this case minus x times x minus 1 plus x minus 1 squared. And then the second one, this one, can be factored as x minus x minus 1. The difference between those two things is 1. So we, we can just go ahead and write it as 1. And then times, the second factor is going to be made up of x squared plus x times x minus 1 plus x minus 1 squared. And the whole thing is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. This is going to be 2x minus 1. Then this expression right here, we get x squared minus x squared plus x plus x squared minus 2x plus 1. Here the x squared cancels out. We end up with x squared minus x plus 1. And the last one can be simplified as x squared plus x squared minus x plus x squared minus 2x plus 1. And that's going to give us 3x squared minus 3x plus 1. And the whole thing is equal to 0. Great, so we simplified everything. The, the good thing about being able to factor it first as a difference of two squares and then using sum of two cubes and difference of two cubes is that we're getting quadratics. So we don't have to worry about uh, dealing with a cubic. Okay? So now since we have three factors, we can set each one equal to zero. And obviously this is expected that we're going to get a quintic from here because the x to the sixth power cancels out. Obviously we could also use the binomial theorem, but uh, this uh, method is a little better. So let's go ahead and set each one equal to zero. 2x minus one equals zero is going to give us x equals one half. And that is going to be our first solution. And if you set x squared minus x plus 1 equals 0, then you're going to get complex solutions, non-real complex solutions. That's going to be 1 plus minus the square root of 3i divided by 2. Because if you look at the discriminant, you're going to get 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. So we get two complex solutions from here. And also from the th third factor, we get complex solutions. Let's go ahead and do it. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared which is 9 minus 4ac, which is 12. That's going to be giving us a negative 3 again. So that's going to be plus minus root 3i divided by 2. So we're going to get three kind of different cases here and five solutions, right? So four of them are complex. One of the solutions is real. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second 
method. So my second method, let me rewrite the problem, x to the 6th equals x minus 1 to the 6th. Great, so I can go ahead and, you know, just do the 6th root on both sides. And when you have an even root or power, this is going to turn into the absolute value of the quantity. So you're, you have to consider both the plus and minus sign. So I'm going to use absolute value sign. And this absolute value equation has actually two solutions normally, either x equals x minus 1 or x equals the opposite of x minus 1, which is negative x plus 1. From the first one, we get 0 equals negative 1, which doesn't make sense at all. That means we're not going to get any real solutions from here. The second one gives us 2x equals 1, and that's x equals 1 half. So that's kind of cool. We get the only real solution. Well, what about the complex solutions? You can definitely get them by dividing this polynomial, which is x to the 6 minus x minus 1 to the 6 by x minus 1 half or 2x minus 1, and then you're going to get the other factors, right? But that's going to be some work. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method because third method uses complex numbers, and I think it's very interesting. So, Here's the third method. Our original problem is x to the 6 equals x minus 1 to the 6th power. We're going to go ahead and divide both sides by x minus 1 to the 6th power. And then write this as x over x minus 1 to the 6th power. And since we divided both sides by x minus 1 to the 6th, this is going to equal 1. Now this is cool. How do we use complex numbers? we have something to the 6th power equals 1. So let's go ahead and call that thing z. So from here we get z to the 6th power equals 1, which is actually an equation that is sort of easy to solve, right? We could definitely do the following from this point on. Uh, we could put uh, subtract 1 and then just keep factoring it, and we're going to get the z values, therefore we're going to get the x values. But I want to use a complex number approach. So here's what we're going to look at. We're going to be looking at sixth roots of unity. One is the unity, so we're going to be looking at the sixth roots, because if z to the six is one, then z must be the sixth root of one. But in the complex world, one has six complex roots, not just one. One is one of them, obviously. Z equals one is going to work, but obviously that's not going to give us a real solution. One of these is going to give us a real solution. So let's go ahead and take a look. So we said that x over x minus 1 is equal to z. So let's go ahead and solve for x from here. x equals xz minus z. And now put the xz minus x together and isolate z and factor out x. And from here, you're going to be able to solve for x. So now we can write x in terms of z, z being the sixth root of a sixth root of unity. Okay? So z is the number that satisfies this equation. z to the 6 equals 1, in other words, uh, the 6th roots of unity. Okay? For example, what are 6 roots of unity? So first of all, we have to write 1 as a complex number in polar form. How do you do that? It is cosine 2 pi plus i times sine 2 pi. Alright, great. So now, when you take the 6th root of 1, and you can call, call this w0, like one of the six roots of one, can be written as cosine of two pi over six plus i times sine two pi over six. So you just divide the argument by six. By the way, uh, the the modulus is one here, so we didn't have to consider that. Okay, because if you look at the modulus a squared to a squared plus b squared, you're gonna get one from there. Anyways, so this is the six root, and what is two pi over six? That is pi over three plus i sine pi over 3. So now, when you replace cosine pi over 3 with 1 half, and this one with root 3 over 2i, you're basically getting one of the complex solutions. And obviously, you can get the other ones by looking at other roots of unity. But one of them is actually fairly interesting, which is going to give us, you know, um, the good one, right? So if z is equal to x over x minus 1, and if one of the six roots of unity is... Remember, it starts with cosine pi over 3, and every, every time you add pi over 3. So we're going to get pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi over 3, so on and so forth. 
But 3 pi over 3 is just pi, so let's go ahead and use it. Cosine pi plus i sine pi. Cosine pi is negative 1 and sine pi is 0, so this is just going to be negative 1. If x over x minus 1 is negative 1, let's go ahead and solve for x here. x equals negative x plus 1, 2x equals 1, and x equals 1 half. So from this root of unity, we get the real solution. The others are going to give you the complex solutions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we're just going to finish up. Here's the graph of x to the 6 and x minus 1 to the 6. As you can see, they intersect at 1 half comma 1 over 64. That's the only real solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.